A Fox News alert, country music star Toby Keith has died at the age of 62. A post on social media from early this morning says, quote, Toby Keith passed away peacefully last night, surrounded by his family. He fought his fight with grace and courage. Please respect the privacy of his family at this time. Back in June 2022, Keith revealing he'd been battling stomach cancer for the last six months and was receiving chemo, radiation, and surgery. Tommy Laren's an OutKick host. She joins us now. Tommy, your reflections on the life and legacy of Toby Keith. Well, I, t I gotta tell you guys, being here in Nashville, Tennessee, obviously it hits a little different here in Music City. Toby Keith, such a big part of this town, such a big part of country music, and he was actually the first concert I ever attended, so he holds a really special place in my heart and the heart of so many Americans as well. And I can't help but think about his patriotic anthems, courtesy of the red, white, and blue, and the aftermath of 9-11, such an anthem for Americans. He gave us such a cathartic release, and he was just such a fantastic patriot, so important to country music. You know, we're so happy that he is in peace now, but he's such a, a wonderful talent to have lost. And our hearts and our prayers go to his family and obviously to the country music industry. There will never be another Toby Keith. There will never be another Toby Keith, Tommy. You're so right about that. And I was reading that he was in his 30s when he signed his first record deal, which is a little late in the game, but he was trying so hard to get his big break. And before he, he did that, he worked as a rodeo hand. He worked in the Oklahoma oil fields. He also played semi-professional football to support his family, uh, which I thought was a pretty interesting detail. He talked about his early days wanting to be in the music industry when he was in his teen teenage years. He posted this on his social media just five days ago. Watch this, Tommy. First song I ever wrote, I was 14 or 15 years old. It was called uh, If You're Handing Out a Heartache. And it was... It wasn't bad, it was structured right, but it wasn't very good either. And, uh, but the people around here, when I played it, is, were like, wow, that's a great song. It's just a song to, uh, you know, that was 5,000 songs ago. That was 5,000 songs ago, he said. And then think about all of the songs that he has written since. I think one of the reasons he's so special is because he has this beautiful voice. And also, he just has such a clever way with words. His lyrics uh, should have been a cowboy, courtesy of the red, white, and blue. We were talking about that song before. I love this bar, American Soldier. I mean, these songs, Tommy, really are, in many ways, the anthems to our lives. You're exactly right, and he is so authentic, so genuine when you listen to Toby Keith's music. And I still get chills to this very day when you hear, you know, the first lines of Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, I think that that's a song, whether you like country music or not, that's a song that resonates with you if you're a proud American. He was certainly a proud American. He loved this country. He loved this family. We need more men like Toby Keith, and he will never be forgotten, of course, in country music or in the music industry in America. What an amazing man in such a loss for us today. An absolutely yeah. random fact about Toby Keith that I just found out. Went to Villanova University. Oh, for you wouldn't a year. have thought that. Shocking because 99% of the population of Villanova comes from the tri state area, <laughs> New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. It's shocking that a country boy like Toby Keith went yeah. there to study, like you mentioned, petroleum. He was going to work in the oil yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and I just think that that song, courtesy of the red, white, and blue, I mean, how many service members who served our country after 9 11? Um, we're able to get through that experience listening to those lyrics on repeat. A, a life well lived, a life well yeah. lived. There is other news this morning, Tommy. The Senate set to vote on a $118 billion border security bill tomorrow. And Al Sharpton, of all people, is trying to flip Biden's border crisis on Republicans. But he uses an interesting word. Listen. You're getting migrants beating up policemen in the streets in New York. You're seeing an influx of migrants all over the country that, frankly, have people outraged. And couldn't there be some kind of public pressure put in the next couple of days in some of these senator states saying, why are you allowing this to continue? We're looking every day at the invasion of migrants, and they're playing a time game with politics on this. I mean, putting that aside, the politics game of all this, is Al Sharpton in danger of being canceled by MSNBC because he used the word invasion? That seems like something you don't hear a lot on the old MSNBC, CNNs, and the like. Tommy? 
No, well, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. He's exactly right about what's going on at our southern border. It's absolutely an invasion. Anybody can see that it's an invasion. I'm sure the MSNBC audience isn't going to maybe like or prefer that he uses that term, but I will say that is where his reality ends because he looks at this bill. I don't know if he's read it or not. I don't know if he understands it or not, but what it really does is it codifies and it legitimizes the invasion that's going on at our southern border. So the fact that he's using these talking points that all of a sudden Republicans need to do their job. Joe Biden could fix this anytime he wants. I doubt he's up right now, but if Joe Biden is up right now, he could fix the border crisis right now with a stroke of a pen. He undid our national security with a stroke of a pen in the early days of his administration, undoing everything that Trump did. So uh, maybe Al Sharpton should send a message to Joe Biden when he eventually wakes up and let him know that he can stop the invasion whenever he chooses. Yeah. In the blink of an eye, Al Sharpton becomes a border hawk. Politics no, like is a that. wild game. Tommy, thank you so much for talking about that and also reflecting, more importantly, on the life of Toby Keith. We appreciate you. Have a great day.